Okay, well, I think we're off. Yeah. Well, um, good evening, everybody, and very big welcome to you if you're watching this a little bit later. I think lots, lots of people do. Um, I'm really happy to introduce to you um, Katie Leonard from Art UK, um, and she's going to talk to us uh, this evening, or be in conversation with me, rather, um, to talk about the superpower of looking, a fabulous um, programme to really help primary teachers use the wonderful works of art that we have um, all around the UK in their classroom with a really um, super easy to use toolkit and um, really kind of bumping up the status of the subject in so many different ways. Um, so Katie, would you like to just tell us a little bit about yourself and your role? Oh, well, thank you very much for inviting me, Susan, and an SCAD for letting go of me talk this evening. So, yeah, I'm Katie Leonard. I'm Head of Learning at Art UK, and it's my great pleasure to be here this afternoon and this evening, or whenever you're watching this back, um, to talk about our learning programme, but specifically the wonderful Superpower of Looking um, project that we've um, launched nationally this year. And we're really excited about sharing this with lots of teachers across the whole of the UK. Lovely. And um, Katie, are you going to kind of show us, give us a little kind of flavour of that um, and then then we can kind of have a little chat about it afterwards? Yes, of course. So I'll, I'll just share my screen and get my slides ready. And there we go. Yeah. So um, as I said, I work for um, an art education charity. Art UK, and this is all about our learning programme. At the heart of what we do is about connecting you to the art that you own across the whole of the UK in the public collections. Um, I'd like to talk to you specifically about our learning programme. We currently have over 300,000 artworks available for you to see digitally online, and they are represented by over 3,500 collections, museums, galleries, spaces that ho house those artworks. So a really great broad range of resources that you can see across um, the whole of the UK, wherever you're based. Um, all of our resources are free to use and they're linked to the National Art Collection, and we're really, really proud of that. Lots of different ways you can engage with these learning resources. You can jump online straight away. Um, you can look at videos. You can look at lesson resources. You can get ideas for creating um, in the classroom or at home, depending on where you're based, if you're homeschool or if you're uh, teaching in a school or if you're a student or even a lifelong learner or a family. They really are accessible for everybody. Um, you can also get more in-depth artists in focus resources and we've just recently launched quite a few that really drill down at contemporary artists and really showcasing our uh, diversity and inclusion within art and design and we also have lots of um, audio descriptions as well so that's quite a lovely way to access artworks as well as being inclusive so these are designed for lots and lots of people to get engaged within art and design our learning programme really is about connecting you with art and we want to support teachers, students and lifelong learners to access those resources. So if you've got your phones, you can scan that little QR code there and it should take you directly to the Learn webpage where you can see all those wonderful resources that are free to use. Um, but the, the real reason I'm here this afternoon is to talk about the superpower of looking, which is one of our flagship uh, projects that we're really delighted to be able to share with you this afternoon. And that's been generously supported and funded by the Freelands Foundation. So what is the superpower of looking all about? I hope by the end of this presentation, you'll have a really good overview of it. The superpower of looking really accelerates curriculum development by providing free resources that empower our children and young people to develop visual literacy skills. It's about really zooming in, close looking, and slowing down. So you can see with our frame logo there, it really gets you to focus on one area of the artwork. And what we're about with this project is developing oracy skills, language acquisition, but this is all based on using artworks, just one artwork. And we've got a whole range of these artworks I'm gonna take you through shortly. But this is really giving a powerful tool to your children to be able to think like an artist, talk like an artist, and be confident in describing artworks, the way that the colour's been used, 
the formal elements, looking at line, shape, form and composition. And so the oracy aspect of this is really crucial. It's really about celebrating and using those key art terms within art and design and being able to be confident as well as teachers and our students to use that when looking at an artwork. So the superpower of looking is taught using inspirational films. We've got some lively guided school-based discussion points for you that enable you to explore with your students looking at individual artworks. It's really about asking questions and really being directed by your children in the classroom about some of the questions that they ask that, that then promotes more discussion and looking and really looking, not just noticing or glancing, but really zooming in. We are supporting teachers as well by providing free CPD training, which I'll talk about shortly, toolkits, teachers notes, and lots of other great resources that we hope that you'll enjoy having a look at during this session or maybe afterwards if you're watching this back on a recording. So this really is about uh, supporting the art and design curriculums wherever you're based in the UK. So I should mention that it's, it's linked to all the Four Nations curriculums wherever you might be. There's opportunities there for cross-curricular links and I think there's going to be some uh, links being put in the chat about how it can support other subject areas across the school. It really supports students to talk and share ideas and collaborate whilst looking at the artworks. And you can see in the artwork there on the screen, the resources are visually exciting. They fill the whole interactive whiteboard in your classroom and you're invited to explore the painting by zooming in. We've got some great features of technology that means that you can zoom in so closely that on that little image there of the tiger, you can zoom into the teeth, for example, and see the brush strokes. And the biggest part of this project, we feel in terms of a project aim, is to create confident and empathetic young people where cultural capital is not the preserve of the few. And we really believe that developing oracy and visual literacy skills in particular is going to enable that cultural capital for those children to succeed outside of school life and in their, in their endeavour as young citizens. So we teach children reading, writing, maths, rightly so we teach these, but we don't teach what images might mean. And the superpower of looking is looking to change that. This is a nationwide initiative that's looking at the world of art and images as its starting point. And it's really about learning how to decode and read and interpret visual information and sharpen those powers of observation. So I'm gonna talk through a few more slides. Um, you may like to grab your phone again. If you've got a tablet, you can hold up to the QR code there and you can kind of look along through the resources with me at the same time. You can see um, the Taylor image there by Lubiana Himid is one of our resources. Actually, it's a really popular one. It's a great resource, um, some great zooming in opportunities and discussion points to that resource. So I'll just give you a few moments if you're, if you're QR coding. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got 21 lesson resources free to available to you right now. You can hop on and have a look at them now. There's no cost to these. They have these high resolution artworks that allow this wonderful zoom in feature that I mentioned, and you can really get into close contact with the artworks and really explore the paintings with your children in class. The lessons are grouped into themes, so it might relate to your curriculum if you're looking at portraits, for example, or some historical work, some landscape, still life and every day. And we've got a new, range coming online that's entitled identity and more exciting developments for 2025 as well. Each lesson resource has teacher notes that support you to feel confident to deliver these sessions in the classroom. So they're almost like a crib sheet, a bit of a scaffolding resource. So you literally do not need to know anything about the artwork or the artist to teach the superpower of looking. It really does um, enable anyone to access these and you can learn together with your students, but there are some top tip notes for you in the teacher notes that can help um, support your delivery of the session. We've also got wonderful presenter led films as a little slide deck there of all the wonderful films we have. We've got some great presenters from Bob and Roberta Smith, um, famous art education artist, and supporter of NSE, NSEAD and the patron of Art UK, Yolanda Brown, 
Adat Apatan and Gus Casely Hayfield. Hayford is one of our most recent presenters um, on an artwork that I'm going to talk to you about in a moment. Running through all the lesson resources, we've really paid careful attention to ensure that everyone's learning. We've been working with SEND specialists to make sure that we're making our resources inclusive and we're continually refining these to make sure that we're approaching a sensory curriculum. So within the everyone learning suggestions, we have activities that respond to sensory approaches, whether it's a make, a move, a communicate, a touch, a listen, a feel. So there's different ideas to activate um, the consolidation of the superpower of looking, the looking and the talking element, and then the making element as a response to the superpower of looking artwork. This is really exciting. This is kind of hot off the press. This is only released this week on Monday. This is our newest resource by the wonderful artist Kahinda Wiley, a portrait of Melissa Thompson. And this is our newest resource in our new identity series. It's got a fantastic five minute hook video, which means that you can take a little bit of a breather and let your students watch that whilst you get ready for the next section of the school a superpower of looking um, questions that you might ask the, stu the students in your lesson. Um, I really encourage you to have a look at that. It's been a really popular already. We've had um, over 2000 views of it already <laughs> since Monday. So a really, really great addition to the superpower of looking curriculum. And the next part that I'd like to talk to you about is what we can do to support you. So you might be interested, but you're thinking, oh, well, it's not for me. I'm really not sure. Well, this is where our whole CPD support package kicks in. We have two schools officers um, as part of the Superpower of Looking team, and their role is to support um, teachers in school to get started with Superpower, particularly if you're an art coordinator and wanted to roll it out in your school and engage the whole of your staff in the school with a superpower of looking or if you're just an individual teacher that's quite interested we can give you some practical support for how to start as an incentive um, of that we're able to reward um, schools and teachers with um, a wonderful limited edition artwork print and you can see in the fantastic image there Bob and Roberta Smith with um, a teacher champion, Manda Barrett, who's received her print because she shared it with uh, three other schools and was able to set up a CPT session with her teachers in her school. So that really spread the word of superpower and her school now is a superpower of looking school. And they've got a wonderful print on display in their school as they um, as people come to visit the school, they see that they're really passionate and committed to art and design in that school, which is really exciting. We also provide lots of other opportunities to attend events and connect through teacher networks, both in galleries and collections, in person and virtually. So we can often connect you up to a local collection wherever you're based in the UK. And we're very excited about our first ever virtual school trip, which is taking part on the 17th of October 2024. So pop a note in your diary. We'd love you to come along. We're going to be taking you and your children on a journey to two locations in the UK to explore two fantastic artworks in two locations. And it'll be a very unique experience. And we hope that you might be interested in gaining an arts award in a day from that experience because we're going to be able to link with Discover in a Day as part of arts awards. So really great if you're looking to do an arts mark for your school or you're just interested in rewarding your schools your children further with an arts award also teachers that go really above and beyond and share more widely in multi-academy trusts across local authorities um we'd really like to reward them with enabling them to connect with a local gallery and having an artwork loan to school for the day um i'm really happy to say that um Mandy is a teacher champion, has done that. So we will be working with a local gallery to bring an artwork into the school for the day. And that brings with it such great additional benefits. The whole school community can get involved with an arts activity. It's really about raising the profile of arts in the school and that cultural connectivity of the local community, bringing in families, carers, parents, everybody in the school to be involved in art for the day. So lots and lots of exciting things happen if you're a teacher champion. So how do you get involved? Um, you can QR code again. I love QR codes. They're, my, they're great for directing you. Um, you can scan and uh, sign up. You can sign up to our newsletter. Um, as a teacher champion, you get that practical support from our schools officers. 
a limited edition and artwork print, which has been designed by Bob and Roberta Smith. It's absolutely beautiful and it's really great fun. Also some information about regional networking opportunities. And all we ask of you as teacher champions is to engage with other teachers, spread the word for us, look on social medias, tag us in, share the great news of you trying out these with your class. And that's a great way of evidencing it, maybe um, on social media, through our Facebook page and our Instagram and our X feeds, and also connecting with other teachers outside your school. We're really about collaborating and bringing teachers together to share ideas and support each other. So um, it's a great way to meet other teachers, particularly if you're uh, an individual art coordinator or a teacher that leads art in your school and you're, you feel quite isolated. It's a great way to connect in with others um, across the region where you're based. So if you haven't already, do look us up on social media, uh, do follow us, you get um, sort of sneak peeks, you get things like the newest films and resources dropping a couple of days before everybody else does on the web page, um, and you get our newsletter as well, all about all the exciting things that are happening. Um, just a further opportunity to have a look at the resources, and then here's some contact details that will be shared with you by NSEAD at the end of the session as a PDF slide. So no need to rush to write them down, but these are our wonderful schools officers, Nellie and Joe, who are based in the North and South of England. And they'll be really delighted to hear from you. If you are excited about the potential of becoming a teacher champion or want some more information, do, do drop them a line. And that's all from me at the moment. And I think uh, open for some questions from Susan. Oh, Katie, that's so brilliant. It was a really, um, so, so lovely and such a kind of needed resource for, for primary teachers who are, you know, sometimes kind of struggling with their scheme of work that they've been handed by whoever <laughs> thinks that that's okay. <laughs> and, you know, really kind of trying to kind of really, um, uh, you know, do something with the subject in their schools. I think that's, um, the, the, it seems to be a very kind of well-rounded um, um, amount of the, the, the things that you're doing. It's not just about kind of getting the children to use the superpower, but it's all the other stuff to support teachers, isn't it? To use works of art. Would, is, is that the kind of aim, do you think, to kind of have a more well-rounded approach? Absolutely. So we're looking to diversify the artists that we've got currently within our collection. So we want to make sure that we've got an artwork from all four uh, nations, so yeah. we're looking to secure artworks in Northern Ireland and Wales because we haven't currently got an artwork from that area, but that's in the pipeline, that's happening. And mm -hmm. um, we shall have some resources that um, are mapped to that area very, very soon. And we're also keen to make sure that artworks are using artists, um, you know, diverse artists, artists. We're very, very focused on anti-racism and anti-ableism um, within our uh, aims and objectives of superpower. So more artists that are alive. So um, maybe not so many pale male and stale artists, but some yeah. female artists, artists that are currently practicing contemporary artists as well. And we're looking to diversify um, the actual medium as well. So at the moment, a lot of our artworks are oil on canvas. We've got plans in place to look at collage, photography, textiles and objects as well as we move um, through our programme. Fantastic. I mean, there's, there, it's going to be never ending, <laughs> isn't it? The sort of things that are possible with this, to be perfectly honest. And um, I've got a little question in the chat before we before we go on. So I'd really, um, if anybody is listening and they want to put, uh, give us a question, please do that. We're so welcome. Uh, you're so welcome to do that. So um, the question is, this is such a wonderful scheme. Are you mapping geographical engagement? I'm thinking of engagement in disadvantaged areas for example it's a great question and absolutely yes this this is all around cultural capital and really supporting those schools and those young people in areas of disadvantage this project is all around social mobility um with the oracy and language acquisition and using artwork so yes we are geographically mapping our engagement we we know where our cold spots are and we know that we are doing some targeted um, work with particular areas of disadvantage. I'm actually based in Stoke-on-Trent. Art UK has a head office in Stoke-on-Trent, and that is one of our priority areas as well. But um, we are working with schools where free school meals, people premium, and those sort of disadvantage indicators are a priority for us. 
So yes, absolutely. That will be part of our rollout. I didn't mention in the presentation that we're actually funded till 2027. So it's it's a long, etudal um, programme and we really hope that it will continue beyond 2027 as well. So yeah, we've got plenty it. of time to engage lots, yeah. lots and lots of schools. Absolutely, that's fantastic. Um, in terms of what you were saying about kind of, you know, engaging um, teachers and children with, with artworks, I think there's kind of sometimes a bit of a misconception, isn't there? If you're not very confident in, in teaching art, and so, there are a lot of primary teachers that are, are not very confident in, in the subject, and that they sort of feel or they don't know enough about a, a work of art to be able to use it with the children. But I think this is very reassuring for those. It's exactly almost for those teachers, isn't it? Because it gives them the tools to to do that. Do you want to talk a little bit about how that sort of works? Yeah, absolutely. We want to um, relay any fears about having to have art history knowledge or um you know, that kind of level of art history names and what the artwork's about. The Superpower of Looking really isn't about that knowledge canon. It's about close looking and using open inquiry process questions. We've got nudge questions that will help elicit that conversation with your children. But we do use the formal elements to develop that subject specificity and that confidence, that reliable framework to empower those children to be able to answer those questions around what they see in those artworks. So um, you don't need to know who painted the picture. You don't need to know the narrative. We do give you a context box within the resources so that you can have that in your back pocket, if you like, as a little bit of a, can we explore and find it out together what this artwork is telling us or what decoding what this artwork is about? You know, some teachers have said that they don't even tell uh, what the artwork is called and they work that out together with the class and try and figure it out by their superpower of looking which is a really lovely approach actually so yeah I think you don't need to be an art specialist to deliver a superpower of looking in fact some of our teacher champions actually are not art specialists we've had a lot of humanities teachers and mathematicians so um, yeah it's for all primary school teachers to get engaged with um, and you should really shouldn't feel um, that you need art specialism to be able to deliver superpower of looking hopefully you feel supported enough from our teaching our schools coordinators that you, you'll fly it and you'll absolutely love it absolutely um well, you were talking a little bit about you know in um, developing children's visual literacy um and really getting them to, to slow down and look and i think this is really um such an important yeah, it's a huge area isn't it because children's concentration is uh I think, you know, something that is really worrying for a lot of teachers, the, the level of concentration that they don't have and whether it's, you know, the reaction to COVID or you know, the mental health crisis, there's so much going on in children's lives. Actually, to have a bit of time to, to slow down, look at one thing that's not going anywhere, you know, there's no kind of, <laughs> you know, um, and I think that's a hugely important um uh, sort of gift that we give children to to be able to develop their visual literacy. Do you want to say a little bit about why why you think that's important at now? You know, for yeah, children? absolutely. I think it, I think visual literacy is important right now. Um, today's primary school children are go are growing up in a rapidly evolving digital society. I imagery is playing a dominant role. And visual literacy is a key skill to help them navigate this very image heavy world. The world of deep fakes, AI, you know, it's, it's really about that critical analysis, questioning what you see and thinking about how you then articulate what you see to then make informed decisions. Um, I'll give you a really scary fact. Well, it's not a scary fact, but just one 0.81 trillion photos are taken worldwide every year that is 5 billion every day so we we are overwhelmed with images both online and offline as as young people and children are as well and as such that's why at art uk and with freelance foundations funding and the superpower of looking's ethos we believe that the fourth pillar of education, if you like, up there with reading, writing and mathemat mathematics um, is visual literacy. We think it's really important right now to be able to 
empower our children to navigate the next the next part of their lives you know these critical skills really support the development of our young people and equip them for life and for the 21st century skills needed in the workplace for the jobs we don't even know that have been created yet but we know that digital and AI is going to be a big part of that. So it's really about upskilling them and giving them those necessary skills um, yeah. for their for their own individual futures. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more um, as a grandmother in waiting. <laughs> I know exactly, you know, uh, the, what, what parents worry about, um, you know, uh, with their children and um, and to be able to kind of give the children, um, you know, those skills of actually really being able to look at something and question it. Um, not just being able to accept it and then a lot of the curriculum is about just accepting isn't it it's about getting stuff done basically and you know ticking boxes and you know um uh, getting things right um but art with art we can really um develop other areas of children's you know worlds can't we and i think that that's uh, such a hugely important thing um there's another little question here. I think it's from Diane, actually. <laughs> um, she says, are there any training resources for teachers who might want to encourage colleagues to be involved or hold school participation? Because obviously that aim is to get every teacher using this, not just the arts <laughs> leader in the school. What do you think about that? Absolutely. So, um we provide every half term a whole online CPD session that's free for anyone to attend. So if you sign up to the newsletter and follow us on uh, socials, you'll be able to see when that, that is. We've got some planned in um, April and May. Very often teacher champions come and present at those events as well, which is lovely because, you know, your teachers are talking to teachers and actually saying how it really works in the classroom is key. And they share ideas of how they've implemented it and combined it with their art curriculums. As I mentioned in the presentation, we've got our schools officers as well that can deliver whole school CPD. Um, particularly if you're thinking of a whole school approach, which is music to my ears, because we don't really want this to be just a one off teacher doing it in isolation in their classroom. That's brilliant. But what we want to be able to support that teacher is to spread the word and that actually becomes part of the curriculum. The visual literacy and the superpower of looking is a part of the, the curriculum that really drives this systematic improvement in visual literacy for children and young people. Um, and we're also developing as well, we're also all about developing resources. These will be special resources for teacher champions. And um, we're looking at creating slides for an assembly that could be delivered for whole school assembly, but also slides that can be delivered for whole school um, CPD sessions that the teacher champions can then deliver. So they haven't got to go and spend loads of time creating them. We're going to kind of make them ready made for the teacher champions to share back. So, yes, I think there's multiple things that we'd love to do. Um, my, my suggestion would be get in contact with us and um, we'll make it happen for your whole school participation if that's what you're interested in. That Thank sounds amazing. Katie. Wow, you've thought of everything. <laughs> 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 that's really um super we were actually it is actually at six o'clock now hasn't that gone so quickly i can't even believe it um <laughs> I really would love to say thank you so much for a really clear and, um, you know, uh, inspiring presentation. And I hope lots you get lots more um, of the people watching this signing straight up for Teach champ Champions and, um, you know, um, having bringing superpower into their schools. So I think hopefully we've spread the word really well tonight. Thank you so much, Susan. And thank you, NSEAD, for hosting me. Yeah, that's so great. Okay, then. Thanks very much, everybody, for watching. Take care. Bye.